from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Girls in Tech Catalyst Conference, brought to you by Girls in Tech. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here at theCUBE. We're in downtown San Francisco at the Girls in Tech Catalyst Conference. About 700 professionals. It's a really cool conference. It's a single track, two days. All the presentations are about 15, 20 minutes of people telling their stories. Vast majority of women, a couple of men. I think they brought in some younger uh, kids to get inspired. So we're excited to be here. Been coming for a couple years. And our next guest, many time CUBE alum. I just know her as Sandy Carter. She does have a title, VP of Enterprise Workloads at AWS. But I don't know, Sandy, how long have you been coming on theCUBE? How many years? Oh wow, I don't know. Too many to count and we don't want yeah, to admit it's to true. it. Yeah, it's true. But so, thank anyway. you guys for supporting events like this, Jeff, because I know that you guys have been supporting women in tech and girls in tech for so long and we really appreciate well, that very it, much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, and it's so important and we, and we love to do it and we especially love when it's right in our backyard, which yeah, makes it really right, easy just right. to grab some, <laughs> some crew and run up here. So, so give us an update, you are chairman of the board now and, and I think we've talked to probably three or four board members today. It's a really impressive group of people and Adriana has, has done amazing things with this organization the last 11 years. And you're sitting watching it grow internationally, the number of events, the types of events. Give us your perspective. Yeah, so um, I think Girls in Tech is an amazing organization. That's why I decided to join the board uh, and then to take on the chairman of the board position. And uh, the reason I think it's so powerful is that it's really focused on young women, millennial women, who are looking to become business owners, leaders, entrepreneurs and who want to apply technology to make themselves more competitive. It's, you know, I know Adriana came up with this in 2007, but even today, the mission and the values are still really relevant. These are the top things that women need to know about today. Right. And this is really about filling up the pipeline, sharing experiences. The conference today, I, I don't know if you got to hear any of the sessions, but they're really not about, you know, let me do technical skills. It's really about, um, how do you break through the next level? How do you grow your business? How do you scale? And so it's really those type of topics that we can share experiences as, as experienced businesswomen uh, with others so that they can learn and grow from that. Right, and just a really simple stuff, like you know, raise your hand, take the new assignment, take you a risk. It. You the, know, crooked, go, the crooked path. The crooked path, yeah. that was what I was looking for. And, you know, yeah. Do something that you don't necessarily have experience in, whether it's finance or accounting or HR or product management, sales, you know, take a risk and chances are you're going to get, you're going to get uh, paid off for it. And I, I think those yeah. simple lessons are so, so important. And then of course, which comes up time and time again, is just to have role models, you know, senior role models That's who've right. been successful, who have an interesting story, they have a crooked path, it wasn't easy, it wasn't even defined, but here they are successful so that the younger uh, women can look up to them. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that it's, you know, the big message today, I think, for women was to have the confidence. Basically, that sums up what you just said, right? Be confident, and even if you don't feel confident, show confidence, right, right. which I think is so important. Take it till you make it, right? That's and right, you got it, you got it. Because everybody else is, you just don't know <laughs> that's it. Right, you that's think right. they know what they're doing, they're doing the same that's thing. That's right, well it's interesting, one of the stats today said that men will apply for a job if they have 60% of the qualifications, women will only apply if they have between 90 or 95%. Right. So I think you know, being able to know that you're confident and that you're going to make it, that you're going to do things, and go ahead and take that risk is really right. important. So the other big shift that we've seen in this conference um, is really the corporate sponsorship. So AWS is here, obviously you're here, you're on the board, but the amount of logos, the size of the companies on the logos has really grown a lot since I think we were first at this one in, in Phoenix, Phoenix in 2016. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so not only again is it the right thing to do, but it's also really good business to get involved and you get great ROI for being involved in these types of organizations. That's right, you know, um, innovation is really about having diversity of thought. And so having women, having uh, you know, different colleges, having different sexual orientation, just diversity really helps you to innovate. Right. 93% of CEOs said that innovation is their number one competitive advantage. So we're seeing a lot of companies now pick up on that and know that they've got to come and they've got to be attractive, not only as a, um, a company that people would want to work at, an employer, but also just as a company that you might want to do business with. So today, I love the story of GoDaddy. You know, she was saying GoDaddy was targeting small businesses. Well, most of those are run by right, women, right. but they weren't doing the right targeting. Right. So I think, I think it's a phenomenal 
um, change that we're seeing with companies like this doing the support. Yeah. Uh, AWS, Amazon Web Services, is proud to be one of the major sponsors. We had uh, Charlie, one of our SVPs, on stage today chatting about lessons he've learned. But we've also done things like um, understanding you know, how women are buying and we're doing focus groups and we're doing different things like that to really help us right. gain insight. Right, so final question from the board point of view as you look forward and the expansion opportunities, they seem almost unlimited between the countries, the participants, and the variation uh, and types of events that you guys are, are undertaking. It's really <laughs> quite a bit to, to, uh, to bite off. Well, you know, we have kind of a two-pronged mission. One is for entrepreneurs, and so you're seeing us really emphasize classes and things like um, our Amplify event where we have women come and pitch ideas right, right. that really grow that side of the business. In fact, I was just in Cuba last week uh, on behalf of, of Girls in Tech, talking to female entrepreneurs there and how we could help them because they really want us to set up some classes there to teach these entrepreneurs how to grow. And the second problem of our mission is around technology and coding. So we've got classes, we've got things with uh, AWS like We Power Tech, so that women can learn technology and use it for their competitive advantage. So while it seems like we're doing a lot of things, it's really around that two-pronged mission, entrepreneurship and that coding technology focus. All right, well Sandy, uh, thanks again for stopping by and really congratulations to you, not only in what you do at AWS, but really this is a very, very important work with Girls in Tech. Great, thank you, and thank you for being so supportive. We oh, appreciate it very much. Our pleasure. All right, she's Sandy Carter, I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE from Girls in Tech Catalyst in downtown San Francisco. Thanks for watching. <laughs>